If you live in Oregon and are wondering if now is the right time to buy a home or if you should wait till 2025, then this video is for you. I can't tell you how many videos over the past few years have all said that there's a housing market crash right around the corner. Now we have seen a bit of a slowdown, but I would definitely not call it a crash. To really know whether or not you should buy a home now or wait depends on several factors. Obviously there's your financial situation, your risk tolerance, but a huge factor is the underlying economic principles that determine how the housing market works in the first place. So that's what I'm gonna be covering in this video. I'm gonna go over the economic trends, the graphs showing what's happened with interest rates, where we are now, and giving analogies of what this looks like. It's really important for you as a potential home buyer to know what's going on, how the housing market works, and where we fit right now in the grand scheme of things. Well, there's a lot that I'm gonna be covering in this video, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you need to know as a home buyer is where the housing market is and what things look like right now. By the way, I am a licensed real estate agent, so if you have questions about your specific situation, feel free to reach out to me. My information is right there at the bottom of the screen. So I like to compare the housing market to a river and a dam. Now it's not a perfect analogy, but home buyers are a lot like a river, and the dam is the point where people are actually buying a home. The number of people buying a home at a given time is determined by three main factors. First one is how many new households are buying homes, or how many new home buyers are there. The second is home prices, so how much do homes cost, and the third is interest rates. Home prices are affected by several factors, but one of the main ones is inventory. How many homes are actually available to buy at a given time? Now we all know that in 2008, the housing market crashed and builders essentially just stopped building. We went from home builders going from 15, 17,000 homes a year, all the way up to 25,000 homes a year in 2005 and six. So then the market crashed and building went to about 5,000 homes a year and plateaued at around 10,000 homes per year. They went a little bit higher during COVID times, but we're still under 10,000 homes being built per year right now. So this is by far the main reason that we have a critical housing shortage and why homes have not decreased in value despite high interest rates. So then COVID happens and you have interest rates drop down to two and a half to 3%. So that's essentially, if you look at that dam, it's like lowering the gates all the way and the water is just flooding over. Then, as you can see on the graph below, rates went from below 3% and nearly tripled to 8% at their peak in 2023. So that pretty much stopped the flow or at least made it go down to a trickle. It's like you lower the gates all the way, all this water flows out and then you raise the gates again and it pretty much stops all the water from being able to come over the dam. I also like to compare this to like, you're driving down the highway and all of a sudden you just shift to reverse and push on the gas. Maybe you're still moving forward, but you're slowing down really fast. So that's what happened. The gates went down, water came out, rates went up, and the water pretty much stopped. 2023 was the slowest year in terms of how many homes sold in real estate since 1997. But now we're quickly closing in on the end of 2024 and home prices are still pretty much the same. They haven't really gone down like a lot of people said they would. And why is that? Why didn't we see a crash? Well, the interest rates and how many homes are available for sale is only part of the story. Not only are not enough homes being built, but there's also way more people wanting to buy them. In Oregon and nationally, there is a huge spike in people who are wanting to buy their first home. This data is from 2022, and as you can see, the median home buying age is 35. So now in 2024, that line is right at the base of this huge spike of people who are at the median home buying age. So part of the reasons people are still buying homes is just because there's so many people wanting to buy homes. Even though 35 is the median age, there's people who are younger than that that are already buying their first homes. So there's a lot of people buying homes, but that spike is gonna add a few thousand more people per year that are gonna be taking homes out of the market. So going back to the river analogy, Yes, the gates have been raised, but the reservoir is quickly filling and there is a monsoon upriver that is about to make this dam overflow again. Between the huge spike in people who want to buy the first home and not enough homes being built in the first place, the economists are estimating that Oregon is about 140,000 homes short of current demand and that they need to build 440,000 more homes in the next 20 years. To put that in perspective, that's 22,000 homes on average being built every year, and that is just not going to happen because right now we're at 10,000 homes. So we're not gonna be building double the homes every year. It's just not going to happen. We're going to see 
a housing shortage for a long time. Honestly, probably until we're past this spike and people wanting to buy homes and then things will level out because there are less younger people and then there'll be less younger people who are all looking to buy a home at the same time. So eventually in the next decade or two, we may see things level out a little bit, but for at least the next 10 years, things are going to be a little bit messy. But where we are right now, yes, there's a monsoon upriver, but the gates are still high and mostly have kept water at bay, even though there's basically a huge floodplain upstream. There's a lot of pent up demand, but the high interest rates have made it really hard for people to buy homes. And so people have been waiting on the sidelines. Rates have been over 6% for about two years, ever since September of 2022. And people are starting to get used to it. In reality, a lot of people are waiting for interest rates to come down and they are starting to come down. As of this recording, interest rates are anywhere between 6.5% to 7.5%, and the best projections right now is that rates will probably stay in that mid-6 range through the end of this year and get into the low 6s by the end of 2025. So the dam gates are slowly lowering, there's a monsoon upriver, we're probably going to see home rates go up quite a bit. Now what exactly this looks like, it's really hard to know, but keep in mind that prices change seasonally. This is a graph going back 10 years, and you can see that every summer prices go up and then in the fall and winter, they go back down, but overall prices increase. And over the past couple of years, prices have held pretty steady when you look at those peaks. But to put this in perspective, the median home price 10 years ago was $300,000, and now we're over $550,000. And we're likely gonna see appreciation in the next year at about five to 8%. So for a $500,000 home, a 5% increase is $25,000. The wild card here is we just don't know how many homes are gonna be available for sale. Are sellers gonna hold on to those low interest rates or are they gonna get fed up in their current living situation and decide to sell their home, adding another home to the inventory. So we're gonna go from 3.9 million annually to about 4.6 million, and that's an increase of about 18%. We'll probably see similar increases in terms of percentage wise here in Oregon. If we see a lot more buyers come on the market and we see interest rates come down, but we don't see a lot of new homes added to the inventory, then we could start seeing bidding wars again. Personally, I don't really know if that's going to happen, but the other thing is market time. Even though prices stayed steady, market time increased, and that's not reflected in that sale price. So market time increasing means that sellers are much more willing to give up seller concessions. So seller credits or seller concessions, this is money given from the seller to the buyer and they can cover things like closing costs or use that money to get a lower interest rate. We've pretty consistently seen our buyers get 10, 15, even $20,000 in credits and some decide to just put that money back in their pocket or use it to buy at lower interest rates, sometimes getting into the 5% range. I think the biggest thing we'll see as the market time comes back down is that sellers won't be as willing to give those seller credits anymore. The other thing is that we're in an election year. A lot of buyers wait for whatever reason because they're not sure what's gonna happen with the market. They wait to buy home until after the election. Right now is actually counterintuitively a good time for buyers because we're seeing prices start to come down a little bit, we're seeing market time increase, and we're seeing less buyers because people are waiting until after the election. So down to the bottom line, should you buy a home now or wait? Well, the advantage of waiting could be that you get to increase your savings. And if you can increase your savings and get a higher down payment, or if you're working on your credit, that gets you a better rate. So that is something specifically to talk to a lender about, which I highly recommend by the way. But whether interest rates are actually gonna drop low enough for that to be a difference, it's kind of a gamble. If you do wait until the spring, just keep in mind that prices are gonna start going back up again. There's going to be more competition and it's possible that we could start seeing bidding wars if rates do come down a little bit more. So any savings that could be gained by lower interest rates could be taken away by more people bidding on homes. Now I mentioned the advantages of buying now, but there is the downside that if you buy now, you may be stuck with a higher rate for a little bit longer if you're not able to refinance into a lower rate within the next few years. One other thing to consider is that if you're working on building up your savings right now, there is an opportunity to get seller credits up to $15,000 like I mentioned, and that means that's $15,000 you don't have to save in the spree. So it's just something to keep in mind. Now, a lot of people, like I mentioned, it do buy in the spring. That's kind of the typical home buying season, which is why there's more competition. But fall is a great time, just from a financial standpoint, the best time to buy at home. Obviously, this is a very in-depth analysis and there are still so many more things to cover. Now, if you are buying a home in the next year, I highly recommend you reaching out. I'd be happy to talk through all of this with you. You can reach me either at my phone or email number or talk to anyone on our team. John and Karen on my team are also seniors real estate specialists. So 
So if you or a family member is in that stage of life where they're trying to figure out whether or not to downsize, that is also a great conversation we could have with you. If you like this information as detailed as it is, please like and subscribe this video to get more content just like this. We also have a newsletter where we put out this kind of information along with the best of what's happening in Newberg, access to our buyer and seller guides, and a lot more great information. So if you're interested, you can sign up for that. That is in the description below. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and I would love to hear from you, but otherwise I will catch you in the next video.